holy moly, these things are heavy. Now I understand why the other YouTubers are using that, uh, I don't know, jack system where they move these things around. They're freaking heavy. A hundred pounds for this server rack battery. Now this is my first 100 amp hour server rack battery. So we're gonna review it today on Tackle That. All right, what knife do we have today to open this box? I don't know, it doesn't even say on it, but I think it's pretty cool. All right, let's get her opened. Now this is a Vever, Vever? I don't know how to pronounce it. Tell me below, is it Vever, Vever? Um, I call it Vever, sounds a little better. But uh, this is the Vever 100 amp hour 48 volt, which is a 51.2 nominal server rack battery. Now this will be a great addition to the solar system. So this is gonna add another 100 amp hours or it's something like 5,000 watt hours of power to the solar system. So that means it can draw out another 5,000 watts uh, over an hour just from this one battery. All right, let's see what's in the box. First thing is we have our instruction manual with a communication cable and some little screws. And there's that big boy right there. I really like the design. They put a nice little logo on here. We've got what looks like feet or wings for mounting. And <laughs> how are we going to even get this thing out of here? <laughs> All right. So if my wife thinks I didn't work out today, I definitely did. I had to redo this take a hundred times, babe. <laughs> Here she is. Wow, very nice. Handles that collapse, I like that. It's got a built-in breaker. Uh, super important, you don't actually have to have that separate anymore. A lot of the server rack batteries are coming with that built-in. Not only is it gonna protect it, but it gives you a way to turn off the power so you can hook this thing up and disconnect it safely. We got two terminal screws for each positive and negative, so you can run these in parallel nice and easy. We got a display, we got our communications port, we got a state of charge indicator. So let's turn her on and see what happens. Nice, nice. All right, so lithium iron phosphate batteries are gonna come about 50 to 70% charged usually. That's the safe storage and safe shipping state of charge. So it's saying we're about 75% charged there. The pack voltage is 52.7 volts. And then it'll also, and there it is, state of charge, 56.4%. We got some buttons on here to go through the menu. Uh, we just covered that on and off button by hitting it. And then we got an RST button. I'm thinking that's a reset button of some sort, uh, but we can look in the manual and see. This is the model LPS 48100, made by Vever. Also says it has a Bluetooth app, so that's cool. I like, of course, being able to communicate with the batteries with your inverter, your hybrid inverter, but I also like to just be able to log into them with the app on your phone. If sometimes you're not having a high quality inverter connected to these, and then you still can get all of those cool parameters and settings and statuses right on the app. The other great thing is you have a display here, so you can check the cell voltages uh, let's see if we can get to them pretty easily. So cell voltage right there. And there we go. So let's go down. So there's all 16 of our cells. So that's millivolts. 3,296 millivolts. So it's really 3.2 volts. So we can go down and scroll here. And all of our voltages are right at that 
3.3 or 3.298 or 99. So overall, a very balanced pack right out of the box. As far as the Bluetooth operation, it's got a smart BMS app and you can download that and log right into this bad boy. It is 5,120 watt hours, lithium iron phosphate, a nice safe, stable technology. Its cell voltage range is from 41.6 to 58.4 volts, very standard for a 16 pack series. So that means they put 16 of the cells in series to hit that 48 volts or that 51.2 volts. It has a maximum continuous discharge of 100 amps. It's got the RS-485 or the CAN connection for communication. It does not have any heating in this. So this would only be for a fair weather or an interior installation. Don't put this out in the cold under zero degrees Kelvin or 32 degrees Fahrenheit and charge it. That's where you can actually damage the cells. If you have some long term storage, it says uh, make sure when the battery is not used, it's not fully charged and it should be ma maintained about 25 to 50% of its charge to let sit around. Here it shows how to wire 16 of these batteries in parallel. Man, I would love to have 16 of these in parallel. Eight and four, and then how to do those communications on that as well. All right, enough of that stuff. Let's get her hooked up and let's um, actually, let's charge it first. We've got our high powered 18 amp Serasky charger charging up this server rack battery. And given the state of charge, it's gonna take two or three hours. So let's let that marinate. So there we go. We are fully charged. State of charge indicator is 100% and uh, we say full on the charger and we also have 100% on the state of charge on the screen. So this thing's ready for a discharge test. So before we do a discharge test, let's see what we're working with here inside the case. I popped off the cover and I was actually impressed. Two big things. They use the copper bus bar, they weld them on, and they have that stress relief. So if these swell a little, you won't get any uh, cracking or loosening of your terminals, which is great. The other thing is this actually has 16 cells, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 cells. So that means it's actually a true battery. Some of these manufacturers, when it comes to these cheap server batteries, they remove one of the battery cells, making it, uh, I don't know, a 48 volt pack, but not a true 16 cell series like you would see in these traditional 51.2 volt uh, server rack batteries. Overall, looks awesome. I'm not a big fan of the tape. You can see the tape coming off, but overall the wires are well managed and they even have some of this loom over here holding things together. Everything was solid and tight and they did use proper wire gauge, which is awesome. All right, let's get this thing back together and uh, we'll do a discharge test. So let's turn her on. We're gonna use this inverter to charge up the solar batteries and that should be a nice discharge test for this thing. We also have a shunt on here and that's how we're gonna measure the output and we have everything all reset, zero watt hours, all right? Let's turn our inverter on. And we are drawing 1,078 watts. And since this is a 5,000 watt hour um, battery pack, that's gonna be a 0.2C discharge. It's gonna take five, about five hours to deplete this battery, which is a typical test. So. We uh, lucked out that that charger draws that much power. So we'll check back in a little bit. We are at 3,423 watt hours. 
with a 33% state of charge. The pack voltage is 51.6 volts. So, so far, doing pretty good. We had to hook the charger back up to kick it back on to see the results. 4,948 watt hours. Now this is a 5120 watt hour battery. So that actually comes in at 96% to capacity. I'm not thrilled about that. New cells, new grade A cells should test around 103, 104% to capacity. This is 96% to capacity. So, you know, I'm losing 8% right out of the gate. The, the crazy thing though, is this is the cheapest battery I found on Amazon with actually 16 cells. You can look at Will Prowse's uh, other video. His only had 15 in it and that's just never gonna be a good day. So, you know, it's about uh, $200 cheaper than any other one, any other decent batteries on the market. And uh, I'm getting 96% of what those other ones would be. That's really still not a bad deal at all. Now, um, let's just make sure I didn't do anything wrong. We're gonna charge this back up and do another test. We've got her all charged up, ready for test number two. And we're gonna check with a multimeter here and see what the voltage is. And this is, again, fully charged. It will not accept any more voltage. Matter of fact, it cut off at that 53.3 on that screen. And it's really got 52.3. So 52.3, this says 52.86. So it really is under 53 volts fully charged. I don't know what kind of trickery that is. It has 16 cells. It should be around 58 volts. Let's do test number two. We're gonna have the shunt all reset and we're gonna see how many watt hours we can pull out of this battery right now. All right, there we go. Voltage is dropping. 4,909 watt hours. What do you guys think? While we were waiting, I dived into the app to double check all the settings and I did notice a setting was off. The individual cell voltages were correct at 3.65 volts, but the overall pack voltage was set to 57 volts. That's not the 100% capacity. So we need to bump that up to 58.4 volts and we're gonna run this test again and give it our best shot. We're back for the third and final test. As you can see, if we disconnect our charger, plug it back in, the charger kicks on. It's charging at 58 volts, 58.4 there. But watch the the charger kicked off, so the BMS is kicking the charger off around 53 volts. So that is a little interesting. Even though we changed the BMS to 58.4 volts, uh, it's not taking a charge much more than 53 volts. Now it does stay, the uh, state of charge is 99.7%, so she's fully charged. So we'll do the third test and we'll see if we can pull over 5,000 watt hours from this thing. You guys ready for the results? 4,984 watt hours. So we didn't hit the mark. We didn't hit the 5,100 plus watt hours that we should have, but it does come in at 97% to capacity. So not too bad given the price. This is $200 cheaper than any reputable brand a 100 amp hour batteries that I can find on Amazon. So given that you're almost at that 100 amp hours and you get a lot of additional features on this like the screen, the breaker, um, and the Bluetooth login functionality, I still find it a really good value. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. More information in the description and we'll see you on the next one.